Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to explain multi-threading in Python. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Think of a thread as a flow of execution, like a river, and each thread can carry out its own separate order of instructions. If we use this process of multi-threading, we can have our program run different parts of its program at different times. They all run concurrently, but not truly in parallel. That is a concept for later referred to as multi-processing. So with threads, they each take a turn running to achieve concurrency. This is due to a notorious feature known as the GIL, the Global Interpreter Lock. Only one thread can be running at one time, but they can all take turns when one thread is idle. So this allows one thread to hold control of the Python interpreter at any one time. So they run concurrently, but not truly in parallel which is what we do with multiprocessing. Now, programs and tasks can be divided into two different categories. They can be CPU bound, that is a program or a task that spends most of its time waiting for internal events, such as a task that is CPU intensive. It is better to use multiprocessing for tasks that are CPU bound. Now, tasks that are IO bound means that the program will spend most of its time waiting for external events, such as waiting for user input, or if you're doing activities like web scraping, you do a lot of sitting around. So with IO bound tasks, it's better to use multi-threading because we can have multiple threads running concurrently, but not truly in parallel like what we do with multi-processing. After importing the threading module, we can count the number of threads that are currently running in the background. Whenever we run a program, we have one thread that is running that is in charge of executing our program and we can print the active count of threads running in our program using the active count function of the threading module. So this will print one. We have one thread that is running and we can print a list of all of the threads that are running by using the enumerate function. So the one thread that is in charge of running our program is referred to as the main thread. By using this concept of multi-threading, we can have more than one thread running concurrently, not truly in parallel. All the threads will take turns while one of them is idle. So we can have more than one thread running, more than just the main thread, which is in charge of running the main body of our program. So while our main thread is in charge of running the main body of our program, we can have another thread that's in charge of a separate part of it, maybe like a countdown timer or something. So one good example, take that quiz game that we made some number of videos ago. While we were waiting for user input, which is a IO bound task, we could have had a countdown timer going, like you only have so many seconds to answer this question. We could have had one thread in charge of waiting for user input and another thread in charge of the countdown timer. So that's an example of multi-threading. We had two threads running concurrently. And what we'll be doing in this video is creating a program that involves multi-threading. We can have different threads in charge of different parts of our program and they can all run concurrently. They'll all take turns while one of them is idle. So let's say that we're running late for school or work in the morning and we have three different tasks that we need to complete before we can leave for school or work. So think of three different things you do in the morning such as maybe eat breakfast, some people drink coffee or maybe a beverage of your choice. So drink coffee. And some people like me, they like to do their homework last minute. So I'll say study before I leave for work or school in the morning. So what we'll do in each of these functions, each of these functions should take some amount of time to complete. So we can have our main thread sleep for a given number of seconds using the sleep function time.sleep. And let's say that in order for me to eat breakfast, this task will take me three seconds. Let's just pretend that instead of minutes, this will be in seconds. So drink coffee will take me four seconds and study will take me five seconds. Then when we finish sleeping, let's print a confirmation message. Let's say you eat breakfast, as in you finish eating breakfast. With drink coffee, you drink coffee. And with study, you finish studying. 
Now, each of these tasks are IO bound. They're gonna be spending a lot of time just waiting around for external events. They're waiting for the sleep function to expire before they can finish their task. So we're going to have all of these three functions run on our main thread, and we'll see how long it takes for us to complete our morning ritual, these three tasks. So let's call these three functions within our main thread. So let's call the eat breakfast function first, followed by drink coffee, and then study in that order. So this program is going to take approximately, let's see, 12 seconds to complete. So there's going to be a pause for a second. You eat breakfast, then followed by you drank coffee, and then study. You finish studying. So this program took about 12 seconds overall. So if this were realistic, what we would have done is we would sit down and eat breakfast for three minutes, well, three seconds in this case, and then once we finish eating breakfast, only then are we allowed to drink our coffee, and once we finish our coffee, only then can we study. So we completed these tasks sequentially and not concurrently. For us to move down to the next function, we need to complete the previous functions because we're doing this in order. But realistically, us human beings, we would probably eat breakfast, drink coffee, and study all together because we can multitask and we can complete these three functions in less time. And that's kind of the same process as multi-threading. We can have these three separate functions running concurrently as if we're multitasking. We're eating breakfast, drinking coffee, and studying all at once. Now, currently we have one thread that is in charge of these three separate functions. What we could do is that we can create three additional threads. Each thread will be in charge of each task, and then we'll have our main thread running in the background that will complete the rest of the program. So this is how to create an additional thread. Let's say that x equals threading dot thread. We need to pass in a target, target equals, and then the name of the function. So let's say thread x will be in charge of eating breakfast. And then you can pass in arguments too if your function has parameters by typing args, and then you pass in a tuple. So let's say you have one argument to pass in, you'll type your argument followed by a comma. But we don't have any arguments in this example, but you'll need to be sure to enter them in if you do have any. Okay, then to begin this thread, you type the name of the thread, in this case, x dot start. So we now have an additional thread, and this thread is in charge of eating breakfast. Now let's create another thread to drink coffee, and we'll call this y. And the target will be drink coffee. And lastly, we have a thread in charge of studying. And this will be Z. And the target is our study function. Okay, now let's see how long it takes for us to complete our program. Oh, and be sure to comment out these function calls within the main thread because we don't want the main thread in charge of those anymore. Okay, now we can run the program. So we have four threads running this time. You eat breakfast, you drink coffee, you finish studying. So this program took approximately five seconds to finish. And the reason that this program took five seconds instead of 12 is because before our main thread was in charge of running these tasks sequentially in order. But now since we have a thread dedicated to each task, we can run them all concurrently instead of sequentially so that this program now took about five seconds to complete. And you may have noticed too that the active count function as well as the enumerate function were called before threads one, two, and three finished their respective tasks. That's because the main thread is not gonna wait around for these three threads to complete. It has its own set of instructions to do, so it is no longer in charge of these three functions. The program is going to handle those three functions to our three threads, and our main thread is going to continue its own set of instructions. Its job is to print the active count as well as call the enumerate function, which it did, and it finished its tasks before threads one, two, and three. Now, one trick that you can do too is that you can use the time modules performance counter function, and this function will return how long it takes our calling thread, as in our main thread, to finish its set of instructions. So our main thread 
is not in charge of executing these three functions. Our main thread is in charge of creating three additional threads and then calling the active count function and the enumerate function, as well as the performance counter function. So our main thread will take approximately 0 0.075 seconds to complete, and our three threads are still running in the background. Our main thread's job, its order of instructions, is to create three additional threads and then immediately print whatever is returned via the active count function, enumerate, and then your performance counter. So our main thread says that it finished its tasks in about 0 0.07 seconds, but threads one through three were still trying to catch up. That's why the main thread finished before our three additional threads. And once all active threads have completed their tasks, then your program will finish an exit. There's also this concept called thread synchronization. We can have a calling thread, in this case, our main thread, wait around for another thread to finish before it can move on with its own instruction set. So let's say we would like our main thread to wait around for thread one, also known as X. So we're going to use the join function of thread X. And now our main thread has to wait around for thread X, also known as thread one to finish before it can move on with its instruction set. So let's do the same with Y and Z. So now our main thread, before it can move on with the rest of the program, has to wait for all of these threads to synchronize and join. And then, and only then, can it move on with the rest of its own instruction set. So this time, our program is going to look a little something like this. You eat breakfast, you drink coffee, you finish studying. So by the time we reach our active count, these threads are already joined and synchronized. They're no longer active. When we enumerate over our active threads, we only have our main thread, and our main thread completed in about 5.1 seconds this time because it did a lot of waiting around. It was waiting for threads X, Y, and Z to join and finish. In conclusion, a thread is a flow of execution like a separate order of instructions that a program can follow. And when we run a program, we always have at least one thread running initially, and that is referred to as the main thread. However, if you have multiple threads using the concept of multi-threading, we can have multiple threads running concurrently, but not truly in parallel, which is what we'll cover during the video on multi-processing. This is due to a feature known as the GIL, the Global Interpreter Lock, which allows only one thread to hold control of the Python interpreter at any one time. And tasks can be either CPU-bound or IO-bound, a CPU-bound task is a program or task that spends most of its time waiting for internal events, such as a task that is CPU-intensive, and IO-bound tasks spend most of their time waiting for external events, such as waiting around for user input or web scraping. With IO-bound tasks, it's better to use multi-threading. With CPU-bound tasks, it's better to use multi-processing. Well, everybody, that is a quick overview of multi-threading. I will post all of this code to the comments section down below. And well, yeah, that's how to achieve multi-threading using Python.